Good morning. was a fun thing to do this morning so welcome back everybody and I showed up late this morning unfortunately I would have been part of the launch the I had to go pick up my wife and her uh, and her mom from the uh, cruise terminal port this morning down in Galveston so they had an awesome trip and I went and picked them up early this morning and got up here to the airfield um, yeah but like I mentioned a little too late to help participate in the launch so the um, they took the F-100 out. Uh, they're not going to stay in the pattern this time, unlike last time. And they're actually going to go out to one of the practice areas and do some air work there in uh, preparation for the air show this year. Because they are planning on flying the F-100 this year in our air show, which is Wings Over Houston on October 25th and 26th. It's the last weekend of October, so any you guys are in the area or stopping by, it's, it's an impressive show regardless, uh, even... <laughs> with or without the f100 flying it, it's it's always a good show blue angels are headlining us this year and always a good time always a good time so anyway it's what we got going on so far we'll get over to the phantom hangar before too long and um while i'm on the subject you guys enjoyed that tech talk i meant uh i did a couple weekends ago where i did the start cards and there's one over there it's going to be backlit but um let me show you something i found in the a4 that uh helps out with a little, a little visualization. Let's go check this out. All right, so up here in the gear well of the A4, here's the starter air inlet. This, this aircraft also requires a start cart. Now, this is ducted up into the starter, which you guys can see here, except for this one does not have an exhaust outlet like the Phantom does. And you can actually see the blades. This is almost like a one half of a turbocharger, if you want to think of it that way. But um, yeah, there's the blades, and this one just ventilates exhaust into the uh, engine compartment here once the uh, once the air has been used up. 
But here is the engine compartment of an A4 Skyhawk. TA4 in our case. I don't recall the specific engine that's inside this, but uh, there she is. Yeah. 's now on that shutdown you guys may have seen a little bit of jet fuel come out one of the relief ports that's normal all right so what that is is whenever you uh, especially on these older jets whenever you shut it down 
and the move the handle to cut off, you have a rotating engine with the mechanical fuel pump still moving or trying to keep the fuel system pressurized. And now that fuel is no longer going into the combustor. So now it's a, essentially a dead end for the fuel, but it's still being pressurized by a still rotating fuel pump. So a lot of these older aircraft, and including the MiGs, will do this. That's a pressure relief valve that will keep the fuel lines from getting overpressured whenever the uh, engine gets shut down or in case of a uh, pressure regulator failure. So that's what that is. And you'll see this on MiGs too, and I've seen that before. Um, my understanding is on a lot of newer aircraft that pressure relief valve vents back into a tank versus straight overboard. So you don't see that on modern aircraft any, uh, much. All right, so this is one of my least favorite activities on the, uh, on the F-100. So you got the tail hook here which is a very large spring bar and that's the the only thing holding it up right now is this latch that's um controlled in the cockpit so this pin is what pins it in place but uh that hook comes down with considerable force so i'm always very careful with these things i don't like springs i go from the other side There we go, pinned. Yep, it made it through. <sighs> made it a little bit safer. If you're wondering what this structure is, that is a tail strike protection. So in case the uh, an over rotation on takeoff, that'll hit the ground first and protect the engine nozzle from uh, contact with the pavement on takeoff roll. This is part of the steering mechanism on this aircraft, operated through these uh, bell cranks, pulleys, and cables. But in order to safely tow, you got to disconnect that so that this is now free castering. And then this bar right here will prevent you from even connecting the tow bar without this. Uh, if this is still hooked up like it was a second ago, like you saw, if this is still attached to the, the link here, you can't hook up the tow bar. All right. So you guys may recognize this fellow. He was in the back seat again on the F-100. This is Jet Jared. So yeah. How did that flight go? How, what, what that you, was amazing. That was, you, you, you guys left the pattern this time. Yeah, so uh, we took off out of Ellington. We went eastbound. We went up over, uh, you know, out over the water, out over the Galveston Bay, and, uh, and a little bit farther than that in some cases. Uh, went up above 10,000 feet. Most of the time we were between about 14 and 17,000 feet. And uh, just kind of rung the airplane out a little bit, checked the slats, you know, all the way through the power and did some rolls left and right, just checked everything. Nice. How'd uh, do some maneuvering too? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Oh. So that was my first time to actually get some stick time in the F-100, which um, it's amazing. It's very sensitive. It, it flies a lot like the A-4, but somehow uh, it's really difficult to describe. I would say it's harder to fly than the A-4, definitely, because mm -hmm. uh, it's more sensitive. And, uh, well, and ours, the, ours doesn't have dampers, I've learned. Doesn't have dampers, and so that makes it, it's real easy to uh, kind of get it into some uh, oscillation if you're not careful. A little PRO. Yep. And, uh, but yeah, you just got to stay ahead of that, watch it. And just like any of these high performance jets, you got to 
know where you're going before you get there. Right. Um, leveling off at an altitude, you start that quite early and all that. So yeah. it's a lot of fun. And then in the pattern, I think you guys are going to do a couple of uh, couple of circles. Yeah. But uh, you guys had a little something happen. Yeah. So we came back in the pattern, uh, the full intention of being to do a couple of uh, low approaches, check the burner, you know, stay in the pattern, burn off a little bit more fuel. But as soon as we turned base, we had an, an aft bay equipment over overheat. I mean, it just came on for long enough for us to read it, bump some power in, it went away. Um, you know, really not that concerned about it, but when you see something like that, it's the second time we've flown it in, in a matter of years. We decided, let's go ahead and full stop it and let's take a look at it. And uh, one of these things, once you make a decision to stop and your problem goes away, it's wise to stick with your decision that you already made, so yes. that's what we did. Less up, less it's something brewing in the back that you don't want to deal with later. Absolutely, and, and if something's hot in the back of the airplane and you're on base to final, and you choose not to land, I think that would be unwise. So. Yeah. Pretty smart, I think, with the, especially since he's only one of two that can fly in the right. entire world. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly so. Awesome. But other than that, I mean, she flew beautifully, everything was yeah. great. Now, like I mentioned to you yesterday on the phone, it's like, I'm gonna show a plate. Yeah. A lot of people are gonna be disappointed because I got a lot of comments like, hey, I wanna see that big sexy stud's leg again. <laughs> Well, you're going to be disappointed because we didn't have any cameras aiming at my leg today. Oh. Uh, but what I did, and I did this for you, I took my Insta360 and I stuck it out of the panel so that you could see as much of the instrument panel and, and the throttle and everything as you could during the flight. It didn't get much outside, but I had two other GoPros looking outside and Chris had two other GoPros, three other GoPros looking outside. So hopefully for you DCS guys and, and, and you, you can use some of this 360 footage and see what's going on. And I had that thing on pretty much the entire flight. Awesome. From startup to shutdown. So I might be able to get some of the footage from our, our cameras. Uh, pay attention to his channel. He's definitely gonna have some of that flight video. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. And uh, thanks again for watching and thank you for uh, you know coming Absolutely. out here and helping us out too. Yeah. And if you guys don't know, he yeah, he has his own YouTube channel. I'll leave the link down below and possibly somewhere up here if I remember. Yep, and exactly. And, and just so you know too, it takes people like Jamie and I, my wife's even out here helping all of our friends. Like the flight's over, some people leave, but most people that are here to get the thing ready are here when the thing's over and you know, and the fun's over and the noise stops and people leave, but this is where it's at. People sweeping the hangar, we're moving airplanes around, yep. we're checking the oil, we're repacking the chute and all this kind of stuff that people don't understand. Like how can I get involved? This is how you get involved. This is how you become a part of something like this that we're doing is come out here when the noise isn't awesome right? and start helping us out because we sure could use it. Yep, and like you've seen with uh, us and the Phantom, the, the, the amount of work it takes just to even get it to just run the engines again. Yep, and even, you know, we're, we're working together. Collings Foundation, obviously we're flying a Collings Foundation F-100 today. Yep. And uh, Vietnam War Flight Museum here, we even work across the street with, with the Lone Star Flight Museum guys. Yep. And uh, it takes all of us, we're all in it for the same reasons, and we say this all the time. But let's all help each other, let's keep the dream going, let's keep yeah. honoring these aircraft and the people that flew them. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. So, awesome. Thanks, so, Jared. All right, man. Hell yeah. Thank y'all for watching. Yeah, be sure to check out his channel. Again, links, links down below. Huh, it's a little bit of a mess on the floor. A lot of, uh, Kitty litter down. But I have a feeling that Al pulled the fuel line today while we were over with the F100. You said the filter's still up there? Filter's still up there, but the, the line's off. Oh, good. It's pretty difficult. So the line, it has two seals on both sides. You can see one here, and there's one on the other side. Mm -hmm. You have to be very careful because this is a hard seal to source and also one that can easily be damaged. damaged. Nice. But then, the canister's still in there. Okay, that's project for next week. We'll see because of time constraints, but uh, and it's really dang hot today. But yeah, good progress. And man, I still can't get over the, the diameter of these fuel lines and how much fuel passes through them. All right, so not much of an update for the Phantom. I'm sorry about that, but uh, we had, we were busy over with the F100 earlier. But on a bonus, I found my work light, which was sitting on top of a Sidewinder rail. And we got a special guest this weekend. We have Aaron here, uh, who's a volunteer with the Commemorative Air Force. That's right. Um, was a loadmaster on Texas Raiders. That's right. Yep. And he also does a podcast on the... Why is my light on? 
He does a podcast on the site called From the Right Seat Podcast, and a couple of us here at the hangar are going to be guests on it. So That's right. we're going to be recording yeah. that later today. You want to tell yep. us a little bit more about it? So uh, just off the cuff, uh, just thought I'd, I would start a podcast and... You know, there's a lot of videos out there, a lot of a lot of pilots out there that that show how to become an airline pilot, how mm -hmm. to become an airline pilot, how to go to school and become an airline pilot. But there's a lot more to aviation, and especially on the warbird side of aviation that I have grown to love Me near too. and dear in my heart. Yeah, this is so, very niche. Yeah, it's very niche, and it's such a and they say aviation is a small community. Mm -hmm. Warbird community is even smaller. Right. <laughs> so everybody knows everybody. So. Uh, I said, why not start a podcast of my own? Um, so I've I've gotten I think y'all are going to be episode nine, I do believe. Nice. Um, you know, some special guests. Uh, Kelly Hudson was on there. Uh, Nancy Quishin, who is my executive officer uh, in the Gulf Coast Wing, um, and also Frey Doyle, who is the um, squadron commander mm -hmm. of the schoolhouse in Florida nice. for the AC-130J, the new Ghost Riders. Wow. So he was he was on my podcast not too long ago. I think and they came to the air show here last year and did a nice display. I do believe, I do believe they did. Mm -hmm. And um, also uh, one Sam Raz Larson, who is the F-22 demo pilot. He's, he was also on my on my podcast. So um, it's a it's a tiny little thing that I've I've grown to to love and and to get out and see stuff like this. And oh yeah talk to people like like y'all it's just it's it, been really cool it's it's weird opportunities that you didn't think of when you start something like <laughs> this like not. i remember talking to my wife like hey i want to start a youtube channel i never thought i'd ever get involved with something like this right yeah. and then here we are with all sorts of cool stuff like the yeah. f100 that you guys saw earlier oh, yeah. and all sorts of neat stuff uh air show definitely is coming up too and um one thing i'll do is uh i think we're gonna we're gonna record that together yep so, uh, if you're into the podcast, be sure to check out his podcast, From the Right Seat Podcast. I'll do a video for that uh, with the GoPros. We'll do like a simultaneous recording so you guys get to see that on both sides of the house. So, look, really looking forward to this. We're, we're about to go head off for lunch. Uh, we're going to wrap up the, my usual weekend video and head off to lunch. And then we're going to go and uh, find some nice air-conditioned space and uh, record this podcast. There'll be a few of us on there, so something to look forward to. For those of you that uh, enjoy the podcast, I know I do, especially on long drives. <laughs> so, well, thank you. Awesome. Uh, any any more for your um, your channel? Uh, so you no, uh, just from the Right Seat Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, um, Google Podcasts no longer, but um, YouTube actually does take care of the Google side of, of the podcast stuff. Okay. So everywhere you get podcasts, that's where, where you can find me. So like Spotify and uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, yeah, YouTube. Um, nice. I yeah, he's Radio, on YouTube as well. So, so I'll leave, I'll, again, I'll leave links down below for you guys, uh, for your convenience. Awesome. So awesome. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Pleasure. All right, guys. Well, that about wraps up for the hangar this weekend. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the F100. Uh, definitely look forward to seeing this uh, happen here in a little while. So with that, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.